in Islam, they believe that jinn can also do it. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Philip and Brogno, authors of The Vengeful Jinn. We'll be right back. Are you bored doing the same tired, normal summer events? Then why not try something paranormal? Phenom Events is proud to sponsor Lancaster After Dark, their newest paranormal summer event to be held July 14th through the 17th at the Lancaster Host Resort in the beautiful historic town of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There will be scheduled ghost hunts and celebrity speakers, including Chris Fleming from A&E's Psychic Kids, Brad and Barry Kling from the Discovery Channel's Ghost Lab, and the Scared Crew. That's July 14th through the 17th in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. For ticket information, visit the official website at www.lancasterafterdark.com. That's lancasterafterdark.com. Happy haunting. Whether you're curious about cognition, attracted to astronomy, or delighted by dinosaurs, you'll want to join us, Seth Shostak and Molly Bentley and Decadence Radio each Thursday evening at 5 p.m. for Are We Alone? Are We Alone explores the science and technology that define life on this planet. And perhaps on other worlds, Are We Alone? You'll find it here on Decadence Radio, Radio with Attitude, each Thursday at 5 p.m. That's Are We Alone? Here on Decadence Radio. We're back, and you're listening to Unknown Origins Radio. Our guests tonight are Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Philip and Brogno, authors of the book The Vengeful Jinn. The Jinn, uh, how long have they existed on this earth? And basically, what are their lifespans? I mean, if they, if they, if they can be born, then I would assume that they would die. And how long is a lifespan, and how long has this race been around? Well, they been around since ancient times. They have very long lifespans. They can live for thousands of years, and that lore goes way back in time, too. So uh, a year in the life of the jinn would be, what, hours to us, you know, or, or rather, um, I think I've got that backwards. Phil, you take that. Well, <laughs> the fact is is that we see in, in certain scriptures that the same jinn who were around, who were around when Iblis fell and when the jinn lost grace with Allah, are still around today. So, you know, we don't know exactly how long jinn live, but they may live millions of years. They may have one extreme long lifespan. Now, in some circles over the Middle East, you see, there's an idea, especially if you go closer to India, they believe that, you know, human beings reincarnate. And we have very short lifespans, but we reincarnate into new bodies so that we can learn. And then we reach enlightenment at a certain stage after so many reincarnations. But the jinn do not reincarnate. They have one long lifespan, and they're expected, uh, the plan is, for them to either reach enlightenment or not at the end of their lifespan. So instead of humans coming back over and over again, the jinn live continuously. Their lifespan may be millions and millions of years, and um, no one really knows. You see, in the Islamic belief uh, back in you know a thousand years ago, they said a jinn lived to be a thousand years old. Well, a thousand was a good number for them because nobody really knew how to count much higher than that, and a thousand was like the great number, the millennium, you know, a thousand years. That's the ultimate lifespan. But they surely live longer than that. And like Rosemary said, when we sleep, we sleep for eight hours. But when a jinn rests, and they have to rest because they do have, they do have limited power. Just like us, when we perform a task, we go to a hard day's work, we come home and we have to rest. When the jinn perform whatever they're doing, they're doing whatever they have to do, they have to rest also. We rest for eight hours, six hours, seven hours, or whatever, a jinn can rest for a century and then wake up. So this is how you can have some areas that are very calm paranormally for a certain length of time, then all of a sudden they explode again. Well, I'm really glad you touched on the paranormal again. You know, being three paranormal researchers and I'm in two groups and I'm actually a case manager of one, I get many calls about shadow people and um, all ki different kinds of hauntings. Um, can you tell me, I know, you know, Rosemary touches on it a lot in her presentation, if you're lucky enough to see it, that uh, there's 
various forms that the jinn take that can be misconstrued as paranormal. Can you enlighten our audience to that? Well, I, I think, well, to, to start with, I think um, I would like to address the shadow people because that is a very common experience. Uh, I think it's very underreported, vastly underreported, and I've come to the conclusion that shadow people are jinn. I've studied them for years. Uh, I went through a process of elimination trying to figure out what they were. A lot of people think they're demons, these dark silhouetted figures that usually show up in bedrooms. They look like tall men wearing coats and sometimes hats. And uh, they have no features, but they seem to be very intent on watching people, sometimes acting in aggressive fashion toward them. Uh, sometimes they act like they're trying to draw somebody's soul or energy out of them or that they want to come into the body. And they terrify people because nobody knows who they are or what they want. Uh, and through a long period of study and analyzing literally hundreds of, of anecdotes and comparing them to um, folklore and uh, what we have to say about our encounters with other kinds of entities, um, I arrived uh, at the elimination of everything except ultra-terrestrial, an unknown entity from another dimension. But yet, when um, I considered them from the standpoint of jinn, they suddenly started to make a lot of sense. Uh, it's exactly the stealth pattern that certain jinn uh, would want to employ in uh, engaging with us. Uh, it affords them an opportunity to watch and observe and maybe even get inside our heads while we are at our most vulnerable, while we're sleeping. Uh, and so um, I have collected these hundreds of cases, and I've gone back through a lot of them, um, and I think that they, the model holds up for gin, that um, uh, that's the best explanation. Uh, and, of course, with the paranormal, it's such a slippery landscape that we often have to reconfigure our whole orientation when we discover new information. Uh, so everything's always open-ended, but I do think that the jinn explains shadow people. I do have a question about uh, shadow people. Like, what about the shadow people that you find at, say, Waverly or Eastern State? You know, those type of, you know, shadow people are, are more, would you say, residual? Or, um, you know, how could you how could you relate that to a jinn? Well, there, there's, there's a difference between shadow figures uh, or shadowy ghosts and shadow people. And a lot of haunted places will have these dark, shadowy, residual figures. Uh, and I think that's exactly what they are. They're just sort of low-watt, residual um, remnants left over from something. But places like Waverly that have active shadow people in them, and they have shadow people, not, not shadow ghosts, mm. dark ghosts. Um, I think that uh, there are certain places that have the right energy or they sit in the right portal um, and they are used by shadow people as transit points or hangout points or places where they can get energized in a, a certain way. And Waverly seems to be one of those places. Phil, I read your earlier book, Interdimensional Universe, and the whole idea of uh, you know other dimensions and beings uh, occupying the same space as ours but on a different dimensional level. Uh, are the jinn considered an interdimensional being or are they existing on our physical plane in a different form? No, they're, inter they're dimensional beings and they exist in a dimension, a spatial area very close to ours. And it's in the same physical space but it's at another angle so to speak, an angle that we cannot see into. So, you see, when we walk, and we think we're walking in a straight line, we're following the curvature of space. But outside of that curve is another dimensional space. We are locked into three-dimensional space. We're locked into the brain of three-dimensional space, as it's called, a fabric, a membrane. Just like water moving down a, a, a tapestry, it, it just clings onto it. And when it reaches the bottom, it falls off. 
So the jinn are in this close by dimension, and it's not a magical place. It's not a spiritual place. It's an actual physical space. And they, we really can't see into that space. So for the most part, they remain invisible to humans. And the word jinn, by the way, means invisible. Earlier you had mentioned uh, the, the one Islamic gentleman who was telling you that all phenomenon, UFO, strange creatures, what are, are all really caused by the jinn. What is your opinion on that? Do you feel that, let's say, UFO phenomenon and abduction phenomenon, is that your opinion, that it's all related to the jinn, or are they separate types of phenomenon, and do the jinn sometimes mimic that? Well, the UFO phenomenon itself is probably one of the most complex of all the paranormal phenomena. UFO investigators don't, want to, don't like to associate UFOs with the paranormal, even though it is in the paranormal. And there's not one single answer for the UFO phenomena, whether it's jinn, extraterrestrials, uh, whatever you want to believe. It's a very complex phenomena with uh, multifaceted uh, origins and um, a great diversity of causes for the UFO phenomena. I believe from all of my years investigating cases, everything from abductions to different types of contacts, to channeling, to UFO encounters of every kind, and so on and so on. You know, I believe that there are a percentage of so-called encounters, alien encounters, that are po probably extraterrestrial in nature. But I also believe that a lot of these contact cases involved, which we label in UFOs, are probably jinn or jinn-like entities that are dimensional in nature. And this is why in UFO literature we see um, different types of beings appearing in different types of contact cases. And, you know, in the early days of UFO investigation, you know, everybody wanted to put all of the UFO sightings under one category. It made it very easy to understand. Nuts and bolts spaceships, aliens from another star system doing scientific study here. That's all a bunch of bunk. The UFO situation is complex, and uh, jinn are responsible for a certain manifestation of UFOs. Unfortunately, the cases that they're involved in are very bizarre. I mean, they're high strangeness cases. This is what was observed by Dr. Hynek back in the early, far back in the early 70s. He saw a number of cases that were like related to UFO sightings, but on the outskirts of UFO sightings, and he only labeled those cases as being high strangeness. UFO investigators would not touch these cases because they dealt too much with paranormal happenings. These are cases which have to be reevaluated again today in this day and age, and I've done many, many of the reevaluations. And in my opinion, many of these high strangeness cases are the result of contact with Jim. What would I, would, I, I would agree on a paranormal uh, angle on that, too, that um, not every paranormal case is the, uh, involves the jinn. Uh, and in the vengeful jinn, we make the, the statement that we're not saying that all entities, all angels, demons, fairies, ETs, mysterious creatures, shadow people, etc., are jinn, but just that the jinn can masquerade as those entities as part of their um, way of interacting with us while remaining hidden. So uh, uh, I do believe that uh, there are uh, fairies and unknown mysterious creatures, uh, that there are extraterrestrials, uh, demonic entities and things. You know, ent these entities exist in their own right as well. You touch upon it, call it um, the master trickster. Do you want to go over that a little bit? Well, trickster is uh, an element that uh, pervades the paranormal, and uh, there are trickster gods in uh, various pantheons, for example. And this is—it's the force of chaos, upset chaos, destruction. Um, in the paranormal, it's like the exploding cigar. Um, in, in it, it seems that um, there are lots of entities that 
want to mess around with you and just when you think you're getting an answer, it vanishes on you or you get uh, pushed off in a totally different direction. Uh, the paranormal is riddled with trickster elements and the gin... Including Chris Fleming from A&E's Psychic Kids, Brad and Barry Kling from the Discovery Channel's Ghost Lab, and the Scared Crew. That's July 14th through the 17th in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. For ticket information, visit the official website at www.lancasterafterdark.com. That's lancasterafterdark.com. Happy haunting. Whether you're curious about cognition, attracted to astronomy, or delighted by dinosaurs, you'll want to join us, Seth Shostak and Molly Bentley and Decadence Radio, each Thursday evening at 5 p.m. for Are We Alone? Are We Alone explores the science and technology that define life on this planet. And perhaps on other worlds, Are We Alone? You'll find it here on Decadence Radio, Radio with Attitude, each Thursday at 5 p.m. That's Are We Alone? Here on Decadence Radio. We're back, and you're listening to Unknown Origins Radio. Our guests tonight are Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Philip and Brogno, authors of the book The Vengeful Jinn. The Jinn, uh, how long have they existed on this earth? And basically, what are their lifespans? I mean, if they, if they, if they can be... In Islam, they believe that Jinn can also do it. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with Rosemary Ellen Guiley and Philip and Brogno, authors of The Vengeful Gin. We'll be right back. Are you bored doing the same tired, normal summer events? Then why not try something paranormal? Phenom Events is proud to sponsor Lancaster After Dark, their newest paranormal summer event to be held July 14th through the 17th at the Lancaster Host Resort in the beautiful historic town of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There will be scheduled ghost hunts and celebrity speakers. Uh, Who were around when Iblis fell and when the jinn lost grace with Allah are still around today. So, you know, we don't know exactly how long jinn live, but they may live millions of years. They may have one extreme long lifespan. Now, in some circles over the Middle East, you see, there's an idea, especially if you go closer to India, they believe that, you know, human beings reincarnate. And we have very short lifespans, but we reincarnate into new bodies so that we can... Learn. ...born, then I would assume that they would die. And how long was a lifespan, and how long has this race been around? Well, they've been around since ancient times. They have very long lifespans. They can live for thousands of years, and that lore goes way back in time too so uh, a year in the life of the jinn would be what hours to us you know or, or rather um, I think I've got that backwards Phil you take that well <laughs> the fact is is that we see in in certain scriptures that the same jinn who were 